Tuesday, June 12th. Yesterday it rained all day, so we are back at it today. Now one thing we are trying to solve is this problem here. Um, when we added this carport on, we told the person he was framing in the carport enclosure to make sure that this is actually aligned with the building because we want it to be one continuous piece. And that didn't happen. So, uh, so Scott's had to come up with a way to fix this and this is his answer. Oh, there you are. Do you want to explain what you were doing here? Yeah, I just, uh, when I heard somebody to frame this I out, just said they, that. Okay. So you, <laughs> but I mean, you're... Sounds you're like you got to cover them. So all we're doing is uh, we uh, are trimming it out because so, we're never going to put stone on the enclosure, ever. So we're just going to have metal there forever. And we'll have stone come up, and that's about the right dimension there for the stone's border. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, so he was just so trying yeah, to, to, so to figure out a way that this would kind of blend it in or make it look. Anyway, so he's created this little piece of molding trim here, and it's going to fit right on here. And uh, he's got it cut at the right angle up there. So let's go ahead and install it and see how that looks. Okay, this is the non-fun part about snipping metal. He's getting the hole for this. And I'm gonna have to, I keep trying to, and I'm like, just a little shade more, just a little shade more. Ugh. Okay, so I'm gonna trim it one more time and it's gonna fit. Okay, this is the part where the camera does get turned off because you don't wanna hear Jen screaming while doing this. I'll tell you, like, you can like get some serious forearm muscles going like with these guys. So I'm gonna be in very good shape by the time I make it around the whole house. After a bit more snipping, we look like it's gonna fit. Not totally pretty, but a little caulking will fix that. And then we'll paint the sky and get a nice little vent on there so we can have some fresh air intake for that wood burning stove. It'll be all good. So let me get some screws on this guy. Speaking of screws, I wanted to talk a little bit about what was going on on the other side of the building. We originally just had these shorter screws and the building supply store said, oh, this is the only size we have, which works fine if you're just screwing it into OSB or some wood, but with the, the ties here on the ICF, they had to go longer, so those shorter ones were just catching. So anyway, I'm like, this is not working, this is not working, and it was just we kept messing it up. I'm like, please go back to the store. So Scott went back, and lo and behold, the guys said, oh, a bunch of people were asking for those longer ones, so we got them in. Oh, thank you so much. So this is working. The saga continues. Why does it take a person three hours to put up one piece of metal? <laughs> well, I finally got this to fit. It's the perfect size. But then the problem was down at the bottom. Like, what, what is going on here? It's the same problem that happened all along the bottom here. So I started lifting up the bitch thing to go, what, what is going on? Well, this is the problem. Because it was stuck up under here all along there bulging out so every time I try to get the metal to go flush against the building at the bottom it was sticking out so I've had to rake back all of this this is why it takes so long because I don't know what I'm doing and I'm having to cut back all of that overage because I'm just like ugh, sawing it off because as, as soon as the metal gets down to here, it just wants to like bow out because obviously it's not, see, like there's, there's a spot right there. Big old hump and that would stick, that the metal would be sticking out. So I just need to get that off of there. So anyway, now it's just costing, hey there, more time because I've got to get it away from the bottom of the building. Well, removing all that rock away from there and cutting that off was a huge chore, but it's it made a difference because it really is making this sit uh, more up against the building and not bulging out. It's having that trouble along there, and there may be some panels I need to remove and uh, do that same thing. So I wish uh, that I wish I had known that I would have sawed all that stuff off of there prior to. Uh, 
obviously putting the butchethane <laughs> down there. <laughs> but now at least, like this is where the foundation, I mean where the, the, the ICF is stopping here and it goes off of the monoslab, so that's where we wanted the line to be. So anyway, now hopefully it'll be easier to continue along there. We'll see how long it takes me to cut out that one. Oh my. <laughs> We attach this piece of molding along here for the trim, so that's going to flow much better. And Scott was cutting the rest of the cedar board to go along. So I just assist him when he needs it, and he's like, hey, I need you to hold this or hold the level. And that's why I didn't get very much done on the <laughs> installing the metal besides the cutting part. So he got that part done, and then over to here. And then we realized we needed to kind of fill in a gap of this. We're just going to leave this door here so there was a gap. And he decided, well, I'm just going to, you know, run some strips along there. So what we can do is uh, put the, like that four inch trim along this door. We'll go ahead and paint that door and just leave it in. His dad found a great deal on a little construction door and hey, it's working. Okay, we're going to get ready to cut some pieces just to fit underneath the window and wait, don't turn that on yet because it's like, it can't, I got to get some ear protection on. <laughs> He's got his guide set up there so uh, with the clamps and this is what's working really well. Look at this good dinner. So, this cool dinner is made with zucchini, meat, and cheese and tomato sauce in a pan. What's this? A pan? Mm -hmm. So this is a pan that mommy put it in. She makes dinner for us. That's a zucchini casserole. Yeah. It's a zucchini casserole. And you help too, huh? And I help okay. too. Okay, let me take a picture of you. Look at you. Hi. And what did you help do when you were making uh, it? Oh, I helped with the meat, mm -hmm. the cheese, and the sauce. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put it in the oven and we're going to see what it tastes like, huh? Sound like a plan? I'm going to go wash my hand out. This is a very good sight. Something that should have been done a very long time ago. <laughs> Nothing is ever done in the right order around here, so we're just kind of used to it. Uh, this is a prior uh, frost-free hose bib, and uh, ooh, made in the USA. It's got to be good. Um, this is the one that goes on the other side of the house, but basically, there it is. So that's what's going through the wall. So we needed one long enough to get through the all of the ICF and the concrete into the other side. So uh, Scott had put this on the other day and then figured, oh, his dad suggested, oh, we should uh, dress it up with some of the siding. And then realized after putting the screws in, it should have nailed it, or, like tacked it in with a staple gun. but. Anyway, we'll just kind of dress that up a little bit later. But at least it's up here and it's working. Is it working? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, let there be water. Oh yeah. I mean, we'll definitely in the winter drain those and disconnect the hoses. But let's go in the inside and see what was going on in there. So the the line got hooked up in here. But see, this all should have been all should have been done before the cabinets were put in. But it's always backwards. Anyway, it's working. Probably would it have went to through have been there. Done that way anyway huh? because How? Probably would have had to have been done that way anyway, just because of the tightness of it. Um, yeah, but those probably the, this this line should have been run through the wall. I mean, hindsight, but, we should have run the conduit there. Yeah, but we didn't really. Anyways, anyway, it's not hurting anything. It's anyway, it's kind of you know running through there and. And it's connected and it's working. We just need to we need to foam that though. Yeah, we will. That's the thing. We're gonna have to get some foam in through there because the opening in the uh, um, 
through the the concrete is it's a large opening so we'll have to next time we open a we've got a list when we open a, a can of spray foam you're gonna need a whole can in there oh are you serious yeah it's gonna oh take gosh. a lot of foam anyway i need to clean that out but that was you'll have to you'll have to splice your straws <sighs> so you can get it to go in deep yeah and then you gotta kind of pull it back as you go okay and then once you get towards about this part from the end let um stop because it's probably going to want to expand out too much uh-huh so we just we're just trying to fill the fill the gap so that's all we're doing there okay i need to put the kitchen back together earlier today emma jean helped me make this zucchini casserole mm. this is mom's old Sorry. recipe with some fresh zucchini Sorry. and Sorry. some uh, grass-fed ground meat in there of course got with some cheese and tomato sauce so um, anyway, that needs to go in the oven, and this kitchen is a wreck, and all of this stuff needs to go back under here, and there's always something that needs to be cleaned or whatever. So let me just get that in the oven and get some dinner ready. 7.30 on Wednesday evening, and I, my goal was to get up to this part here and call it good. The skeeters are getting at me. <laughs> So at least I reached my goal and in between going for bike rides with Emma Jean and making dinner and cleaning things up and all that stuff and teaching summer school I, every day from 8 to 12 and I get done from there and come home when the weather is good and keep working on this. So Scott did this by himself before I got home today. So it's looking good and uh, I'll have to go and I mean I've got more screws to put. I just, my goal was just to get it up there tack it in and uh, we we're measuring along here we're going to make those panels a little bit longer going around the other side and then Scott was uh, adding the little pieces of siding along here to kind of dress it up a little bit and uh, we'll hopefully get that other hose bib installed <laughs> there and we've got to find a vent to go in there for that intake so uh, anyway we're gonna wrap that up for today Let's see, we've got the sun. I don't know if you can even see that. The sun is setting uh, behind the mountain, and we are. Ooh, skeeters. We are uh, happy for blue skies. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so <laughs> we're trying to push it and get some more done today. <laughs> we'll see. If it rains, we're working inside. If it's sunny, we'll be back out here again. Well, I came home from summer school at noon. This, today is Thursday. And this is what, well, it was worse earlier. <laughs> so uh, they went to put the hose bib on uh, this side today and uh, turned it on. And it was just, the, Dur the Dura Rock, well, which is over here, <laughs> it was originally on the wall. Scott said that it just was water was just pouring out of it. They were like, oh, shut it off, what's going on? And so they took the Dura Rock off to find that the hose here that had been in the wall was like severed <laughs> completely in half with like frag blue fragments everywhere. So they figured out what must have happened is that when the electrician was running the chainsaw along here to create the opening for the wire, uh, didn't realize where this thing was and just zapped it. So they dug all that out and then had to splice it together, which I definitely do not want to think of think of splices behind this wall because number one this is not supposed to be here anyway <laughs> that that was supposed to be on the other in the in our bedroom in the other corner so that wouldn't be behind but uh, at some point during the ICF build no it was a, it was a slab build and then somebody said oh put it over here and didn't check with Jen who designed this to make sure it wouldn't be behind the rock behind the wood burning stove. But anyway, that's another whole saga. So here it is, we're trying to deal with it. So they spliced it back together here and got it attached. Um, but the only problem is, it's, I mean, it's sticking out. So we're gonna have to, I mean, we want it to be flush here to get this, we're gonna want the Dura Rock back up here. Um, so we're gonna have to put another piece on the outside to make sure that it's flush on the outside and get this kind of all foamed back in together here or whatever so that was a little bit of the saga today Thursday evening looks like a very productive day I really like seeing this Arctic entry completed Cooper was back today working on getting this angle cut up there and did all of this around the side 
So the Arctic entry is totally completed. Yahoo! One thing I forgot to mention the other day is that we uh, did not put this, the trim on here for the reason of this window. Well, you can kind of see it looked when I thought from the inside that it was just pollen on the outside a few weeks ago and then when I came out to like put the trim on and uh, started like cleaning the window I'm like oh my goodness it's it's not moving what what's wrong what what is this and it appears to be these are triple panes so it's like between the outside uh, pane and then the neck then the middle one it looks like it's either like oxidized or there's something going on either with the argon gas or the solar glazing or something there so um, anyway, we're going to have to replace this one. This is a warranty situation, but uh, so what I did is just marked this one as well. I just put a piece of trim up there and marked it because I'm like, we got to keep going with the siding. <laughs> we can't wait for the window to come in. Who knows when that's going to happen? So that's why there's no uh, trim around this one. So hopefully that will come in. The, the window will come in in the near future. And uh, what's happening along here? Yeah, they put up this corner board today, so really liking the look of that. It's really nice. Scott's been uh, working on some more over here. That's going to look good. So, the yeah, this will be the shingle piece that's going to start um, up, up there right. and go above. So, right, yeah. Right, basically where that, those windows are there. Yeah, it, Just it's going to be... Just a little below be... that window there. So we want to get up to here with the lap siding and then that, those shingle pieces, pieces will be all around the top uh, level, all the way around the whole building. So uh, yeah, we're, we're cruising along. It's really nice to, to see this completed. You got a bunch up in the back too, did huh? you? You so. put some in the back? Yeah. I think I did that. That was up there yesterday, wasn't it? That. I don't I think so. I did not get any more metal done today. I was watching kids at the playground and and all that. So uh, yeah. And anyway, that's the the hose bib did get done on the outside, but I think that was up there the other day, wasn't it? Yesterday? Yeah. It yeah, I did. Okay. So this is what was going on, on the inside. We had to push this all the way through. So we're just gonna have to put like another a piece of wood here or something. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take this piece. Okay. Uh, take this one off here, and then behind it, I'm going to do an oval piece that comes out like that, and then reattach. Um, well, that's hmm. interesting because that's already connected. So. That's gonna, you can't. You're going to have to put some. Well, it'll have to be a two-piece thing or something around that. Yeah, I could cut a two-piece oval and then split it, and then put attach it to where it comes out just far enough. Because I want to. Yeah. I'm gonna straighten it like so. I want it to be that. flush on the other side of the wall, and if it has to stick out here, it's just too bad that they didn't make this in um, a shorter well, they do, length. But, um, that one's for the ICF. Okay, but that's what I mean. It, like because of the ICF, we had to have a longer one, mm -hmm. and this, I guess, which didn't matter. Actually, sticking out like that won't look bad once I do that. It's going to be all right. It's on this side of the building, and it's not like it's you know, in a high traffic area or something, like you'd think, oh, you don't want it against the side of your building where you're like, walk, somebody could walk by and and whack it, but. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll fix it. It'll work. Well, it's Saturday and it is still raining today. So we are working on indoor activities. And what Scott is up to here is getting some texture on the wall. A lot of texture on the wall. Do you want to talk about what you're doing there, honey? You, you know the drill. I know the drill. Yeah, you can <laughs> focus okay, he's focusing. He's got his uh, mud. He's using finishing mud here, and he thinned it out a bit. And uh, he's trying to get quite a bit on the roller. What? Uh, what we realize, he's, got, he's putting this on the wall so we can roll the, the vine pattern. And what we realized when he did these other uh, sections down here, try to slip past you here, honey. Um, 
and I don't know if it's gonna, you're going to be able to see this very well, but when he rolled the, the vine pattern on, we realized, oh, well, we really like it like kind of more pronounced like this, where it's a little bit of a cross between that kind of a bark look and the, and the, the vine. So he went along here, and then this area was not so pronounced, so he just went over this again to, uh, to make it match better. This was kind of our little test section. And uh, we are really excited about the way this looks. We can't wait to see some color on it, because <laughs> it's going to make it stand out even more. But this is uh, exactly how we envisioned. And so now he's rolling. There we go. Let me catch him over here. Just overlapping it slightly so that the pattern doesn't break up too much. Okay. Try to keep the keep, keep this from skipping if you can. Mm-hmm. So that's a good trend. Come out with a little light, but stand to the side a little bit, and the camera should pick that up. I think it is. From where I'm at, oh, it really highlights. Oh, on this side? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's see. I think you can see it all right. That looks great. Yeah, That's, you, when you put it on the computer, uh, it'll... You can see it. It's just a little bit difficult yeah, because of the the way the light's on it here. But that looks that looks amazing. I can see the, the leaves more <laughs> than on the other ones. So well, it won't come out so much, I don't think, right now. Mm -hmm. It's the, the kind of tree bark hybrid. Right. But the paint will bring it out, though. Yeah. So he has this section ready to roll. We're going to keep going along here. And uh, gonna stop there. You're going to stop here. here. OK, and then he's going to go up and do that part. Yeah. So that's all completed. So the very corner there. Uh huh. Okay, and then so this is the roller he's using here. You can see the the vine pattern on there. And uh, when he's finished with that, I believe he's going to go ahead and start on that other wall there too. So while he's doing that, what is Jen doing? Hmm. Well, I'm doing something that I haven't done in a very long time, and that's make cabbage rolls. It's one of our favorite Ukrainian dishes. So I was up early, steaming the cabbage and uh, getting them ready. So I've got all the leaves ready here. The, the secret mixture. Ooh, don't worry, Mom, I'm not going to give away the secret recipe. Ha <laughs> ha And uh, I've got those prepped, so I just need to start rolling them and getting them in our Dutch oven. It takes about four hours to cook. And uh, this is going to be our treat. Well, Scott's been working on this. It's only taken him, what do you say, about 15 minutes to actually yeah, 15 minutes of roll later. that. Mm -hmm. So that looks amazing. And while he has been doing that, it's taken me a little bit longer, more probably more like 30 minutes to actually roll <laughs> these and get everything ready. So I'm going to um, add the uh, tomato juice there and get them in the oven. It's going to take about four hours to slow cook them. So can't wait for dinner. Well, four hours later, and we have some amazing cabbage rolls. I'm just dishing myself a plate up here. Finish sauteing some butter and onions to uh, drizzle over that. And that's what we're going to enjoy as we sit in our living room <laughs> and look at the newly textured walls. For you. Hi there. Let me see your face. And where'd you get that? From the celebration. A girl that painted it for me and said thank you. Uh huh. Yeah, it was past festival. Yep. A little face painting. That's the first time you've ever had your face painted, huh? No, it isn't. It isn't? It's set on your shirt. Is that it tomato juice? You're getting. Uh oh. <laughs> Just rollerblading from, back and from forth. Your Ukrainian cabbage roll? <laughs> I know, I'm having, I'm having seconds on my cabbage roll here. <laughs> She's still eating hers and then rollerblading back and forth, and I'm just sitting here admiring my wonderfully textured living room. Okay, which be I'm... very careful. If you can roll. 
Sunday afternoon activities. Getting some primer on the textured wall. So go in a V shape, Imogene. Do a V. Make upside down V's on the wall. <laughs> careful, careful, careful. The roller's coming off. Oh. The roller's coming off, baby. All right. Looking good. So we have. Look over here. <laughs> Look over here. <laughs> we have some cast and shadow in there. Wow. Looks awesome. Good job, Imogene. Yeah, I'm liking the colors. What do you think? Yeah, keep it away there from go. the. Okay. Don't do that like Feels that. good with the on. fire going in here. Just you're came in from here. outside. It's just been raining. It poured Please. for the past you're almost 24 now. hours. So, to be doing some indoor. Wow, I don't know if, it's, if that's coming out on the camera very well, but it uh, really picks up the texture, that print, huh? Yeah, we were checking out the little puppy. It looks yeah. great. We even got the picture of the puppy and me. I'll show you. Uh huh. Cool. Well, we got some color going now. Don't know how visible that's going to be. We'll get close enough with that lighting. So, yeah, I can see it pretty good there. So that's the texture, kind of a hybrid between bark, tree bark, and uh, vine. So let's see if it shows up on this. The beige talon. That's, that's what it's going to look like. i got to cut in the corner, but I just... Couldn't wait to get some color on that wall. <laughs> so there we go. Starting to look like something in here. Just taking advantage of working inside because the weather pushed us back from doing the exterior. But there's stuff to do in and out. Get her done. Yeah, I want to correct myself because when I saw him doing this before, I thought he was using finishing mud, and he said, no, this is texturing mud. So he's used three different kinds. He's used all-purpose, mud and then finishing and texturing. So we're kind of moving along the hallway. It is a bit tricky to try to keep the, the pattern consistent with the amount of mud you're putting on there and then getting the, the roller on when we're doing the pattern. So I mean, it's, it's an easy process, so I guess it's how you're doing it that's a little bit tricky. So I'm like letting him do this whole thing because he's got a feel for how much pressure to put on it or how much to get on there and rather have more like consistent look throughout the house than me picking it up and then start <laughs> putting on too much or not enough. <laughs> so he's going to apply in this whole section here before uh, rolling with the the vine roller again. There it is, ready to go. Scott has moved down the hallway here. Done this area with the the vine pattern. And in the Arctic entry, we decided to do something a little different, which is just the rolling on of the 
of the texture mud and we're calling it tree bark that's what it's called yeah <laughs> so that's what we're one and a quarter knot roller just apply the mud pretty thick cool i think that it's going to Just add a little different, little different dimension, a little different look. I mean, we love the the blind pattern, but it doesn't necessarily have to be in every part of the house. So something with a little, little different dimension. I think this will be cool. So he's going to go ahead and do this whole room without. Canadian ice lager, and no, it is not beer. <laughs> By Wood Tone, this is our soffit tongue and groove that we are stacking neatly here in the loft because it needs to climatize. We are anticipating putting this up there next week. So, oh, hi, dear. Are you ready with that oh, one? Dear. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, got, so <laughs> we have yeah. a little bit of a stack down there. So, uh, we have a little system. So, go ahead and send her up. Yeah, He's so, sending it up. Uh, one little comment about this. So, like, I know I've got a lot of Canadian friends, and I know when they name this, we're like, so what are we going to call Piney? Eh? Let's call it Canadian Ice Lager. That's for you, my Canadian brothers. You know, my mom is going, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but love. This wood is absolutely gorgeous. gorgeous. It is. Fabulous. I am so excited about this. This is the, the beveled side that will be facing down. It's pre-finished and I mean the wood is just amazing. So it's been sitting out on the trailer for I don't know how many weeks now. We're like we got to get it in the house to get it climatized. So that's what we're up to here. And this is going to sit out there in the summer so it's fairly climatized right now. It's yeah, just it's not, not bad. bad. So, But we want to have it in here for like a week anyway before we get going on yeah. the installing it. If it wasn't pre-finished I'd say a month just because. Yeah. But pre-finished like this, it's... And it was well wrapped and it all came in, in it's in very good condition. So, uh, yeah, right. we're excited about that. Friday evening, June 22nd. And yesterday we were working on getting all that stacked up there. All of the tongue and groove that we're going to be putting on the ceiling. We want to have it climatized over this next week. And before we get to installing it. So we got that accomplished board by board and... Uh, in the midst of Scott being goofy about the, <laughs> the ice logger. I, I just have to tell you that when he said that, I immediately thought, you know, that is something that Bob and Doug McKenzie would come up with. <laughs> because when we were kids, my brother and I memorized so many of their skits, and I'm pretty sure we had almost every line in the Strange Brew movie memorized as well. And we could still recite a few of those to each other today just to kind of keep ourselves entertained. So anyway, that's my little uh, Canadian tidbit for the day or for the evening. And uh, we are really pleased with all of the colors that we have going on in here. Um, I'm going to work on getting the this corner cut in here in a few minutes. Um, but we get it, we did the uh, hallway, and uh, the texture just looks awesome. We are really thrilled with this. And the Arctic entry is is done as well. So we decided to do this. I don't know how well you can see, maybe it's better over here in the light. Just this tree bark. So Scott just rolled this on with the with that texture roller. <laughs> and uh, and does it look like the, the tree bark out there? We think so. <laughs> so we are really, really pleased with that and we decided to just do this one color here in the uh, Arctic entry. And we're also going to be putting the, the tongue and groove uh, on, the, on the ceiling up here as well. So when you walk in, this all flows together. And that's the plan. So we, we definitely want to get this part finished first in here, our main objective. 
this coming week will be to do all the tongue and groove in here and then we'll do the in the Arctic entry. Tomorrow is supposed to be nice. We've had this raining off and on out here. It's kind of dismal right now. Scott's out there cutting some more metal so we can work on that tomorrow um, and get some more siding up. So tomorrow that is the objective and we'll take advantage of some more sunshine or at least no rain. <laughs> But like I said, any day that it's uh, rainy uh, out there, we are in here working on this. So uh, he's going to go ahead and, and finish taping and mudding on this one. Just keep moving along, moving along, and we are making some progress and happy to see some color on the walls. And uh, that's about it for this week.